In this video, we're going to take a look at how to do twisted fringe. Twisted fringe has a unique appearance versus other fringes and a lot of design possibilities. So let's get to it. We'll move these aside and let's take a look. So the first thing to understand is that fundamentally, twisted fringe is really a variation of loop fringe. And with loop fringe, I recommend using doubled thread with twisted fringe, the same thing. So if this was loop fringe, we just do this. What makes it twisted is that there is a twist in the fringe that holds this twisted appearance in there. So what I've done is I've picked up 41 beads and then 41 beads. I like to think of it this way in case I want to add something at the bottom, adding a drop or you want to use two different colors to give kind of a candy cane appearance. The other thing that's helpful is when I'm doing a slight graduation here, so using 41 and 41 and the next one I can go 43 or 45. So that's a good way to think of it. Okay, so we're going to start this way. We're going to pick up all of our beads. Now what we need is doubled thread, and we're going to use something heavy to anchor this here because we're, we need to have some tension in the thread and it needs to stay where it's at. And we need a pin. So how are we going to get the twist in the thread? Well, first make sure that your threads are straight and that your needle is in the center. Then to get the twist in, we're going to hold this and we're going to roll that needle so that it introduces the twist in there. So there's one two, three, and then I want to stroke the thread, holding a little tension there, stroke the thread to bring it all down. Now I'm going to do four, five, six, I'm pinching the needle here and rolling it to get that twist in the thread and stroke it down to even it out so that it isn't all up by the needle. And then seven, eight, nine, and then moving it down there. So I'm going to move this here so that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to take a pin and I'm going to put it in the center between the two doubled threads. Now you need to hold this straight out and so that you've got some tension and you're going to slowly push this towards the beadwork where you can see that what this is doing is it's all straight on this side and all the twist is going into there. And I'm going to slowly push all of that twist into the beads. So I've slowly pushed all of that twist into the beads and I'm holding it. So all of this thread is straight, twist is all up in here. Now I can move that, take this, and this time I'm going to, last time I went up three, this time I'm going to go up four, and of course let's move these other fringes out of the way here, and stitch up into my beadwork, And I pinched that and held it the whole time so that that t thread wouldn't become untwisted. Down four and then down four to get set up for my next fringe. And when you pick it up, it's going to naturally twist on its own. You could give it a little help, manipulate it a little bit and it'll stay because the twist is up into the thread. So I went up four this time because last time I went up three. When you're working with, it's a good idea not to just always go the same level because as time goes by, you're going to see that the fringes will create a pull and if it's all on the same row, then you're going to start to see a seam at that area. So vary your levels of going up into your beadwork and do this. So it's very easy. We're going to pick up all of our beads and we're going to move them all down. We're going to roll our needle. We're going to get some tension, 
hold this, hold this tight, roll our needle, pinching this between the finger and the thumb to roll it and get that twist down in there, moving it in, having the thread nice and straight, then putting our pin in between and pushing this all the way down so the twist enters into the beads and stitching up into the bead, hold it and stitch up into the beadwork. So it's actually pretty easy and it's a very interesting looking fringe. Okay, let's finish up by showing another variation of twisted fringe. And this is the case where there's twisted fringe above and you're doing a, an end sequence. If you're doing just a drop in the middle, just as we in our previous example, pick up your 39 and your end drop and your 39, this is a little different situation. So how would we do this? Well, the first thing is to pick up your beads. And again, I've got my pin ready, my heavy object. Now we're going to have to do our twist in two steps. So first we're going to twist the thread for this. Now you're only doing half, so in this case I'm going to do the same thing as I did before with my twist, moving my beads all the way down. I'm starting out with a straight thread and I'm going to twist one, two, three, four, and five. Now I'm going to get my pin, separate my threads, I'm going to hold this tight, working on my tension, and which is why I need the anchor sitting on the beadwork. and I'm going to slowly and surely then I'm going to move my twist all the way in. So I've picked everything up including my final turn bead and I've moved my twist inside the beads. I'm going to remove my pin and then I'm going up through just this bottom section holding this Now when I get to this point, I want to pull this and I want to pull it very, very tightly. You want a lot of tension, so if you need to, hold on to this turn bead and give everything a good pull. Now what this does is this turn is holding that twist that we've already got done in there. Then I can pick up my top section here, um, picking up these beads. This works great for larger beads on the end here because they'll lay straight because you're actually having a top that is two beads wide as opposed to one. So I'm going to pick up all of those beads, move them down, and again I'm going to do my five. One, two, three, four, five. Holding this with some tension, I'm inserting my pin to separate the threads and I am then moving this down all the way down into the beads. This side gets a little trickier because it's hard to get in. And I hold that. Now for a breed embroidered piece, then I'm going to go to the back side and stitch up through that edge bead staying on the back. I'm going to stitch from the back to the front in that area in there. Stitch over to so that my needle will be positioned under the next bead and out that next bead
and then go ahead and let it twist. Um, usually you have to twist it a little bit on your own to get the twist in there, but it'll stay because the twist is in the thread. It's just that these heavy beads tend to pull it. So you're basically doing the same thing you did before, you're just doing it in two steps. We're going to pick up the entire strand plus the turn bead, get our twist into there, and then as we go up here, we're holding that twist by pulling tightly and that turn bead pressure is locking that twist into the first section. Then we're adding our twist into the second section and completing our fringe. So, this is a really great way and gives you a lot of different design possibilities with twisted fringe. Fringe is just wonderful, so I encourage you to take a look at Bead Play with Fringe, which is available on Amazon, and then also Bead Play with Tassels, because any kind of fringe can either be done along the border, making it fringe, or it can be done as a tassel, and these are uh, explained in the books. Thank you.